Welcome to the Tab and Dillard Podcast, y'all guys. My name's Tab and Dillard. This is Season 5's Episode 2's of the Tab and Dillard Podcast. How in the world are you? I'm usually not recording these on a video, and if you're just listening on the you know, a podcast, what it is... <clears throat> In yesteryears, what folks would do was listen to the radios. Now, the podcast is kind of like a modern-day thing because you use your ears for it, but here's the deal. Uh, I'm recording the video on this. Now, there ain't like a lot. To, I'm sitting here. I guess there's a little to look at because I, uh, I got on a new shirt. Tavern Dillard's Lawn Care Services, mowing, edging, grass-cutting legend. I don't know if you can see it on the video, but I'm right. it's right here. In, in time for the, you know, whatever's you, uh, Black Fridays. I mean, it's Thanksgiving's a week. Now, Thanksgiving is creeping up on us. It ain't here yet. Uh, well, truth be told, this is how it is. The day this podcast come out, it ain't Thanksgiving yet. I do not know what day you listening to the podcast on, but this is coming out the Tuesdays before Thanksgiving, and we got some new stuff rolling in, y'all guys. The Tavern Dillard Lawn Care Services shirt. Uh, there's me on it with a lawnmower. Uh, I signed it, and then you see the whole thing, like, like I just said. It says, uh, Mowing Edge and Grass Cutting Legend. And looky here, I got a sweatshirt, uh, what we call a hoodie, because it got a hood on it, and that's for your ears. Much like a podcast is for your ears, a hood uh, keeps your ears warm uh, when that when that weather starts to cool off a little bit. So this is a, a no pro. I bring the snacks hoodie. So that's coming in, and then the donut gold shirt any day any day and then also i've been mentioning this lately tavern's bacon bag it's a beautiful thing it's got strips of bacon in here it's all flavored and everything they're really good and then at the bottom is what i call the pocker and bacon because it's like bacon i mean it is bacon but they just chop it up in little pieces you know how they got pocker and chicken you just pinch it a little bit there's pocker and bacon at the bottom of the bag it's a beautiful thing so you can check that out in the show notes today the new merch will be there uh and if it ain't up I know the, the sweatshirt, the hoodie is already up on the websites. If the new lawn mowing shirt ain't up yet, just check back. Should be up this week. Uh, I know they exist because I got one on my torsos right now. So I hope you're doing good. I hope you had a good week. A lot went on this past week in town. We got Thanksgiving coming up. So what happened was they did a little Thanksgiving thing already down to nursing home where they go turkey hunting. Uh, they hunting uh, paper turkeys. You know, like crap they made. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit. And then they also hunting turkey sandwiches that they hid in the nursing home. But first things first, in my trailer park, Meemaw is spending a little bit of time getting her baby doll collection together. You know about that? Like, she got baby dolls all over the place. Like, she got shelves on her wall, and she'll keep them baby dolls. She might have dirt and dust on a table or different places in her, in her trailer. But when it comes to that baby doll shelf and them baby dolls, boy... I mean, it looked like a crime scene investigation there. You got the little gloves on and a little dusting pad kind of thing, and you making sure everything's clean. Tabby Jean Tipton, that's what she looked like. Uh, Meemaw's best friend was in there helping her this week. Looked like a crime scene investigator. Meemaw didn't have no gloves on, but it's her baby doll collection. She can do what she want. But they keep them clean and everything. And she got too many now where she can't, she can't display them all at the same time. So they go under her bed. Uh, she got a box they rotate under her bed where she also got a bunch of bonnets for squirrels that she made for, uh, you know, squirrels back in the 1980s. Squirrels hate bonnets, turns out. Lesson learned, Meemaw. I think she's holding out, though. She's like, the next generation, they're going to love them kind of thing, but every squirrel hate them so far. There ain't been one that, that, that really is too thrilled about uh, Meemaw trying to put a bonnet on its head. I mean, you ever seen a squirrel give you the stink eye? I've seen it many times with Meemaw. They don't care for it. So my Meemaw's in there, and her and Tabby Jean Tipton are steady going to work on cleaning that baby doll collection. Well, my brother Brett showed up, and he just assumed uh, his whole life is all about him, and he think everybody else's life revolves around him. So when he's ready to do something, he show up to do it. Well, he, brought, he, he just stormed right into Meemaw's trailer. And he dropped this remote control car that's like needs to be assembled and fixed right on her living room floor. Like, okay, I got to get to work here. I need some tools kind of thing. And Meemaw's like, what in the world are you doing? And Tabby Jean Tipton looked at him and said, looks like you got a death wish. He goes, I got to fix this thing. And Meemaw's like, take that outside. I, we, we doing serious stuff. And we clean the baby doll collection. Don't you get near this stuff kind of thing. 
Like, it's a big deal. And so Brett's there. So he's sitting there wondering, what in the world am I going to do? But he ain't wondering that because he don't think like a normal person do. He just think, Mima, I got to fix this right now. Are you, are you going to interrupt my dreams of, of breaking the world record and remote control car in? I don't even know what that means, but he say something like that, I guess. And she goes, you're going to do whatever you're going to do outside, either on the porch or in the trailer park, but you ain't doing it in here. And she, she kicked him and that remote control car that needed to be assembled out of her trailer and then she following out on the porch to make sure he get the point like don't come back in here with that thing like that away i'm in my trailer and i know a family fight when i hear it peekaboo i look out my trailer door there's me mom and brett outside of her trailer and he's yelling about how how things are so bad and how she's ruining his life kind of thing and she didn't care nothing about it. she went back to the baby doll collection and then he look up and see me he goes tabbing i need eighty dollars i was like for what he goes, I got to put this whole car back together, and then I need a battery. I said, you going to put that whole mess together, and that ain't the answer? You still got to go buy a battery for that thing? He goes, it's $80. I'm like, I ain't got $80 for you. He goes, well, can I borrow it? I was like, do you mean borrow it, or do you mean keep it? He goes, well, keep it. And I was like, no. He goes, borrow it. I was like, no, still no. I ain't got $80 for you. He goes, well, I can't do nothing if I ain't got no battery. I'm like, that ain't my problem, Brett. Just figure it out kind of thing. Put that back together or whatever but I can't do nothing else for you. I was like, you got a job? And then he'd laugh at me, kind of like, who in the world has time for a job when a man's as busy as I am kind of thing? He goes, I need, I need, this is what I'm working on right now. I'm about to make money being a remote control car. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I don't have a category for how you're going to be a car -er. That's the word car with an E-R at the end. He's a remote control car -er. That's what he say. So I don't know. But I had to leave them there because I got things to do. So I leave uh, that. Uh, I know Mimo's okay. Her and Tabby Jean done handled things and uh, kicked Brett out the trailer so they can keep cleaning that baby doll collection. And then uh, I was going into town burger shed. And then I had to get down to the nursing home because I was helping out with that event down there, the turkey hunt event at the nursing home. So you can see how my day was stacked. And I got down to the burger shed, and Myron Curtis down there, since softball season ended, he started taking classes down at Thunder Punch at Coach Hicks Boxing Gym in town. Incidentally, they the ones that beat uh, Team Burger Shed in the championship at the Adult Softball League season. So, uh, they had that going on. But uh, since softball season ended, I guess Mort trying to stay in shape, so he taking some classes down there. Well, he in the burger shed in a little old white karate outfit. And I, I know that ain't something that they issue down there for them boxing lessons uh, because, uh, firstly, um, they ain't a karate studio. They ain't teaching karate. And then, B, if you're working out in boxing or whatever, uh, they might say bring some short britches and maybe a tank top, but they ain't going to put you in a, in a starched pair of uh, karate britches and a little, little jacket thing. And then you're supposed to have a belt around it, but I guess you got to earn a belt, you know, karate. So what he do is Mort got on a regular belt, just like a leather belt. Like it's basically like, oh, this is just my casual outfit for today, but there ain't nothing casual about it. And then them starched britches, they don't even they don't even look comfortable. And the way Mort built, you know, he little he little portly, he got a long torso and then them little stubby legs like tree trunks, buddy. And so he just kind of casual in that. And he see me come in and he turned to me and he start talking to me. Like we already in the middle of a conversation, we ain't even. And he just see me, and he got his little, he got his little karate shirt on with a little leather, regular leather belt. Could have taken it off a pair of creased khakis for all I know. And then uh, you know his little karate britches, and he got little tennis shoes on under that. And he got his tray of food, and he turned and see me come in. He goes, "Yeah, I gotta get a little protein before I hit the workout today," kind of thing. And I look at that tree, that 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 tray he got. He go over to a booth. You know, at the burger shed, and he snug into that booth a little bit, like out of way, get his belly in there, and he set that tray down. I look at that tray, he got a chocolate milkshake, he got curly fries, and mustard. That's it. That's all what's on that tray. And I look at that tray, and I look at Mort. I was like, where's the protein you speak of, Mort? He goes, all this right here. He like wave his hand like he's doing a magic trick, and once he wave it, it's going to turn into protein or something, but it don't. It stayed the same. It's still chocolate milkshake, curly fries, and, and uh, mustard on there. And he goes, I'm pretty limber, Tabin. I was like, well, good good for you, Mort. And Mort's got that thing where he can't have no dairy, but he just blow right through them roadblocks, the milk trait behageny, where if you have dairy, it tear your guts up. He don't care none. But he's in the middle of that burger shed, and he goes, Tabin, I can do a little I can do a little stretching. I can do the splits. I'm like, you can't, Mort, you ain't got nothing to prove to me, buddy. You, you, don't, you can't do 
There ain't no way you can do the splits. Well, he get his little heel out there. He stretch that little leg out. He stretch that little heel out. So that heel's just sliding forward like this way. And then he got that other leg, and he's trying to go backwards. And then I'm thinking, well, maybe he can. Because if he, if he go one way, gravity eventually going to take over. It's going to drop him to the ground, and he may end up doing the splits. Now, how he get out of them, I don't know. But uh, at this point, there ain't no looking away. So there's Mort Dwight L. He got them little grass-stained tennis shoes peeking out from under the, the edge of them britches, you know, them karate pants he got on. And that heel is pushing out front way so far. And then that little back one, and then he feels something. And he try to catch himself because it's, it's getting too close for comfort kind of thing. And he got, them, he got that tray of food right there next to him. And, boy, he catch himself, but he reach over and grab that table. Well, what he do is he smack that tray that's got them curly fries, that mustard, and that chocolate shake. And that thing just hit the air. It's airborne. And it go up. It do a dipsy doodle, backflip, lazy ladle, whatever you want to call it. Land on Mort. And there, now Mort Dwidell is in a white karate outfit with his little grass-stained shoes. And he kind of on his side like he couldn't catch himself. And he got hurt. And we're about to find out about that. But he also got mustard on him, curly fries, and chocolate milkshake. And he holding like the inside of his thigh. Like it turned out he like pulled his groin or something like that. I was like... You're going to have to call it, Mort. I mean, you're going to have to call in and say, we ain't, I, ain't, I can't do no workout today. He was like, oh, Tab, and I think something happened here. I was like, I know something happened. I just watched the whole thing. I'm an eyewitness. You ain't got to convince me of something just happening. I seen the whole thing. Bud's already running to the rescue. He got a wet towel, and he's coming from the, thing, the kitchen back there because he know, too. He goes, this ain't good for business. Somebody come in and see a fella in the karate britches covered in mustard, uh, chocolate shake, and curly fries, and look like he in pain. You got food on the floor. You got a man on the floor. That ain't good for business. So he over there, like, trying to clean Mort up, and, you know, we're trying to hoist his girth off the floor to burger shed kind of thing. And Bud didn't have to do nothing. I'm, Bud didn't have to do anything for Mort, but he helped him clean up, and he gave him more food that he done wasted on that little tray flip that he did when he was trying to catch himself from doing that grafty split fall down in the middle of the burger shed. And I don't know. I'm, I'm glad it ain't softball season because I could see Mort being out for a goodly amount of time. Uh, you know, because you pull a groin muscle inside your thigh like that away? Who knows? I mean, I ain't a docker, but it ain't going to be something like, yep, we all good. Bank, bank, let's just go back and do things as they was. I mean, for all I know, Mort could be uh, limping through Thanksgiving. I sure hope not. But he got cleaned up. That uh, Bud brought out like a mop and everything. And if Mort could have stood, I, I know Bud would have made him mop, but he didn't make Mort mop. He let Mort sit in that little thing and uh, feed his face with curly fries and mustard and, and chocolate shake. So that's how that went. I mean, protein or not, he didn't have to use it to work out today because he got hurt. And I couldn't really hang out that much longer. Anyhow, I got I got Dr. Pepper, bagging up a cheeseburger, curry fries myself. And then I went down to the nursing home because they're having that turkey thing. They're having a the turkey hunt down there. And they're having, I mean, they hunting for a couple things. I mean, basically, it's like hide-and-seek extravaganza. Because what they do is they hide and uh, them paper turkeys. So what they they had a little craft down there this week, you know, like arts and crafts. Like I think they already had the turkey shapes cut out because they don't want some of them folks with scissors. And then they just got a color to glue, glue little googly eyes on the, like a turkey kind of thing. And then what they do is they hang them up uh, at the nursing home. But here's the deal. Uh, they ain't trying to like hide, hide these turkeys. I mean, it's plain as day just stuck to the wall of the hallway. And you just got to walk down, and the way you, you, you pull it off the wall, and you drop it in your brown paper sack they give you, and you hunt it, turkey hunt, done kind of thing. And then the one with the most uh, turkeys in their bag at the end of the hunt, they win. That's going to win a prize. Well, Doreen Bundle, she do not like to lose. And between her and Dewey Gregory, they always got to be on high alert. Them, all, them two always into hijinks, even when you're supposed to be sleeping. Uh, they try to do stuff, like sneak out. Like Dewey Morton looks at being in a nursing home like escape from Alcatraz, something like that. One time, he took a basketball, big old orange basketball. You know how basketballs are, they big and orange. And uh, he glued hair to a basketball and put pillows in his bed uh, so they think it was his head, like he snuck out kind of thing. And he used, like, toenail clippers or something to clip, like, pieces of his hair off over time, I guess, and he glued it to the ball. Well, didn't nobody think that that was Dewey's big old orange head. Nobody believed that his head was a basketball. But then you're probably thinking, Tavin, 
where in the world was Dewey if he wasn't in his bed? Well, he didn't escape. Don't worry, he's under the ping pong table in the rec room. That's like his favorite place to go. He'll go under there and hide and hang out and just have a hoot of a time. So they found him that time. But what's going on today is like we got to keep up. We can't, we can't let them start uh, turkey hunting early. You don't want it to be a fair hunt kind of thing. We don't want no poachers out there. You know, you got to wait your turn. So that, <coughs> boy, I got choked up. I ain't that emotional about turkey hunts, but boy, it really crept up on me. <clears throat> Maybe I should have had a Dr. Pepper sitting nearby. I got a bag of bacon, but I don't know if that'll wet my whistle. Anyhow, so what they're doing is they, they spent earlier in the week coloring them, googly eyeing them turkeys, and now the nurses are going through the nursing home and they're sticking them to the walls. Well, all the while, all the while, Doreen Bundle back in her room and instead of like going out there early and snatching up them things because she want to win and she liable to do that, she liable to bend the rules a little bit, not even bend them, she break them. Uh, but she wasn't out there. So, they, well, she in her room, so she fine. Well, she in her room coloring her own turkeys and stuffing them in a bag kind of thing. She just, she's stuffing her, her turkey pouch, whatever you want to call it. So, thing about that is they thought about that too. What they doing down there is they having you take a bag from them. When they said the turkey hunt starts, then they hand you like a brown paper bag kind of thing, and that's your official bag. And they told Doreen that you can't use that bag. If you're going to use that bag, you got to make, you got to show it to us. It's got to be empty. Doreen's like, I ain't going to hunt then. She didn't want to do it because she, she knew she was about to win, and then she got called on it, and she didn't want to do it. And Dewey Morton, you got to keep an eye on him too because he, 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 they go around looking for food, you know, because he decided he ain't going to even – mess with the turkey hunt like them paper ones he was gonna go look for them turkey sandwiches because he liked a good meal he liked to eat and so he found a couple but he ended up in the employee uh lounge where they bring their own lunch and he got into uh chocolate milk he got into somebody's yogurt peanut butter and jelly sandwich that was crickets he ate all that stuff it's a good thing he don't have that milk trait by hygiene like uh, morton Wydell do because uh yogurt got milk in it uh, chocolate milk got milk, dairy in it too, you know about that? So he had them things, uh, and he steady ate them up. You know, like he, he had no no uh, care in the world that that was somebody else's. And he wasn't even looking for turkey sandwiches. I mean, if you're going to find something, that, that that day of the turkey hunt, if you're just going to pick up food that you didn't get given to you on your tray at the mess hall or your family didn't bring in if he's going to get food it was going to be the turkey sandwich that you found that got hid well he went in the lounge and did his own thing turns out he did find a couple of turkey sandwiches uh three of them to be exact and they hid six of them and then the employees found two more so five of them got found and there's one, you know how like you hide something and you in charge of hiding it and you don't remember where you hid it? Well, that's what happened with the employees at the nursing home. There's one turkey sandwich. They couldn't remember where it was hid. And there's always a chance, you know, like maybe somebody in a nursing home ate it and didn't uh, tell you, but they don't think that's what happened. They think it's still out there somewhere. So time will tell. You know, I don't know if it's going to be this week or next month or next year. Somebody come across a, a turkey sandwich. They's cutting halves. Half a turkey sandwich in a, in a little baggie. I wouldn't want to eat it then. I'll tell you that right now. But it's out there somewhere. So Doreen is, is hot because she couldn't be in that turkey hunt, right? Well, it turns out Vera Gregory, she in a wheelchair. She just rode scooting down the hallway. And she, she went turkey hunting. She won. She got a little hat. It's, uh, it's like white on top with an orange bill. It says, Hunting is my life, or something like that. Away, boy, Doreen seen that prize. She is fired up. She was so mad she didn't win that prize, and she knew she could. She goes, I should have won that prize. I could have won that prize. I'm, I'm a good hunter. I was like, well, you didn't want to play by the rules, Doreen. And so she didn't get the beer. Gregory got that ball cap on now. And she's just, she cruising through the hallways in that wheelchair, and, you know, like number one hunter kind of thing. So that was all going on down there at the nursing home. They got, uh, and then, Cricket, I just had to run down to Burger Shed and get her sandwich because after doing Morton ate that paint butter and jelly, she didn't have no supper down there uh, the night of the turkey hunt. Um, so that's how that went. So Doreen Fundle and, and then Cricket was telling her, she goes, y I know you mad, but you can't be taken down on everybody because you lost this thing because you disqualified. You said you didn't want to play by the rules. 
And what kind of example is that for Captain Thunderboots? That's what Cricket said to her. Because Captain Thunderboots is Doreen's pet goldfish that lived in the room. And Doreen's like, you keep your nose out of my business. Don't tell me how to raise my goldfish kind of thing. Like, but she's getting hot about that. Like, Doreen, she just on one of them moods where you, there wasn't nothing you can say is going to help her out. But you got to hold the line. You can't let her break through them boundaries because then she thinks you're running the show at the nursing home. And Doreen ain't running the show. So she had to get back there, and, and I think she started thinking later, like, what kind of example am I setting for Captain Thunderboots? And uh, she's going to have to sort that out. That's all I know. She's going to have to sort that out. So, I mean, that's uh, that was a big th- That was a, most of my afternoons was down in the evening, early evening, down at the nursing home. And that's like a pre-Thanksgiving thing because, you know, like I say, uh, we creeping up on Thanksgiving right now this week. But I ain't had it yet, so I can't tell you right now today how my Thanksgiving went. But I'm pretty excited about it. Maybe I can let you know, you know, next week on the podcast or whatever how that went. And we'll see. Maybe I'll keep recording these. Uh, it's been a goal for a little bit, a minute or two, to figure out how to, you know, do the videos. I mean, I know how to do the videos, but it's like getting around to doing it. Sometimes it's just either easier to talk. And this is a podcast. It's for your ears. So uh, most people is listening to this. You know, you might be on a jog or a walk or at a ribbon cutting. I don't know, but you listening to this with your ears today. But just so you know, on the YouTubes, there's a video on me here. I'm looking right at the camera right now. I got my Tavins Lawn Care Services shirt on, mowing edge and grass cutting legend. I got no idea if you can read this shirt or if it's out of frame, but I guess we'll all find out later. I could stand up a little bit like out of way. But that's my new shirt. Okay. I don't know what color you call that. I guess it's green or gray, gray green. And then it's kind of a yellow or cream, uh, you know, with the design. But I think I said this on a recent podcast episode that there's a hat that goes with this. It's not here yet. The hat I'm wearing right now, as you can see, is a no-pro hat. I guess that would go with the no-pro hoodie. But that's how that go. So it was a hoot. In town this past week leading up to the Thanksgiving. We got a lot coming up this fall, y'all guys. Check the show notes. You need a bag of bacon. That's what it sounds like in the bag. And then if you need, uh, you check the show notes for the merchandise that's coming in. Hopefully Donut Goals will be here soon. I posted uh, I posted a uh, uh, picture of it on the Instagram stories this past week. You've seen kind of the Donut Goals uh, thing down at Donut Goes, they got a they got a sign on the wall that I made and they made it into a sign. I drawed it or you know, it's not all drawed. It's kinda of, I drawed some and then I set donuts in there to make the thing. Anyhow, check the show notes and you can see if that's available yet. Check the show notes for the bacon. Text me, five oh one three two two six two four nine. Email me, tabandillard at gmail.com. Keep sharing the podcast. Uh, there's folks you like, maybe mild acquaintances, slight enemies. I don't know who you're sharing this with, but keep doing it. I appreciate that. appreciate the ratings. I know F- Apple Podcasts lets you rate these things, and uh, you can also uh, leave a comment uh, on Apple Podcasts, and I can read them with my eyes like, bang, bang, and then all of a sudden I see what you said about it. And sometimes I post them, too. Because y'all promoting my podcast better than me. Everybody's going to say their own podcast should, uh, you should listen to. But if you say it, then it just carry more carry more weight. And speaking of weight, if you ain't tried to do the splits in the burger shed today or anytime this week with a karate outfit on and tip mustard, curly fries, and a chocolate milkshake on you, and you can't even have dairy in the first place, come on, Mort. You're having a pretty good week. I'm Tavin Dillard. This is the Tavin Dillard Podcast. Happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you later.